I've just been sitting here thinking, how can I make 3D printing more complicated? And so I decided to add Wi-Fi to my statue. This is Ground Affected, my name is your dad, and welcome to Marvel's version of a Space Marine. So for this project, what I did was the same thing I do with every project, and I kind of started out knowing I have nothing about what I was doing and basically figured it out as I went along. I soldered all the LEDs that I wanted in the model at first because I felt like this was the most important thing. Once I got these soldered and in place, everything else was just a matter of figuring out how to get the electronics to work. There was a lot of uh, fiddling and a lot of playing with uh, computer programs and all sorts of things which was absolutely unnecessary. In the end we ended up using WLED which is basically an app that you just literally install to an ESP32 board and the reason you use this board is because that's the board that WLED asks you to use. And it also has Wi-Fi. Um, I think if we carefully fold it. <laughs> Woo! It went in. Oh, it went in. It went in. It went in. I don't think it needs to be twisted. You know why it does? Because of perfectionism? <laughs> yes, that is exactly why. Also, do you know what I'm thinking? Do you think we're dumb? I should have painted it silver. What silver? The inside. Nah. It's going to be bright enough anyway. I think it's going to shine straight straight through that thing. This is like I'm working on the real Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> of course, during this process, there was no ways I was going to be not playing with my Iron Man. If you made an Iron Man that lights up and uh, you wanted to make it do cool things, you would probably do this too. Turn on the suit. Now it's probably at this point that you're asking me how did I get Alexa to listen to me if I called her Jarvis? And uh, she doesn't at all. So that was just a very cool trickery of the editing kind. Obviously I needed to make sure that all the LEDs were glued in place because you don't want them moving around when you move the model around and kind of misaligning with the place that you had put them in in the first place. So for gluing the LEDs, the best thing I can suggest is to use something like a 5 minute epoxy. And the reason that I suggest this is because usually CAA glues have fumes that come off of them and this can sometimes hurt your components. Now in order to paint this beast, I'm going to need to cover up all the LEDs and try and protect the electronics as much as possible. Painting of this model was pretty simple and straightforward really. I started out with a black base as usual. I got my Chaos Black from Ground Affected Studios. So basically I just went downstairs and got it. This video was sponsored by Ground Affected Studios. I have a studio which is called Ground Affected Studios. And in my studio we have a... Uh models and uh, 3d prints and games workshop and uh, paints and all sorts of things that uh, you can buy if you would like to check out the link in the description for my website you can also come visit the store and see all the models and things that i've painted okay not all of them because some of them have gone to customers but you can see most of the projects that i've made on this channel in store in person when you come and buy some stuff from the store Thank you for sponsoring this video, Ground Affected Studios. It makes me very happy to be a part of the family. Once the primer had dried, it was time to make sure that everything else fitted as perfectly as it possibly could within the space. I used a very, very short cable, which I got just by going to one of the electronic stores and asking for a spare charging cable from something that they might have in the back. And they had one in the back. I then printed out a decal and glued that onto the bottom of this base because it makes it cooler. And then I dry brushed the base with just a dark silver and I used a light silver to highlight that and that was pretty much the base done. I don't want to overdo it because in this case we've got a light in the base and that is going to draw most of your attention anyway. 
And this is how the electronics are all set up. And this is with the lights coming on. Obviously, it's not plugged into the Iron Man yet, but this is the base light with the little battery pack that I put inside. Now in order to paint the Iron Man, I needed to make sure that there was some way that I could protect the smoke that he's standing on. In hindsight, I didn't really have to do this, but I'd already painted them with a Zenithal highlight, and I didn't want to waste that Zenithal. At least this was the best way I could think to do this in my mind. I used a chrome spray paint over the top of a black primer base layer and this is going to be the base layer for my red that is going to go over the top of this. Some chromes can take really long to dry and in this case using the aerosolized one it seems to dry a little bit quicker. It still probably helps to give it a day or in my case if you're really really impatient just spray it with a hairdryer for at least a half an hour. Now for that fancy a wonderful glorious candy apple red there is just some kind of magic that happens when you use this clear red from Tamiya. It is glossy. It dries glossy. So this already helps you with the fact that Iron Man is meant to be glossy. The one thing I can say with this paint that I found, it doesn't like to be thinned down. If you thin it down, what tends to happen is it comes out orangey and not a nice kind of orange and the gloss is not really there either. So I sprayed this through my airbrush on a really high PSR. I almost used the whole bottle of that. Friggin' heck, bro. Also, because this model didn't fit into my airbrush booth, I ended up having to clean up all the mess that I made by airbrushing all over my airbrush booth. And after a little bit of setup with uh, pushing some buttons and getting old Alexa to look for my new device that I'd created, I managed to get her to listen to me when I asked her to turn it on and off. This is a function that you can actually toggle on and off in the WLED app. If you have any issues with this, then it's probably best to join the WLED uh, Discord group because I have no idea what I'm doing. This was just luck and it worked out and I'm not complaining. For the helmet what I did was I spray painted at first his gold and then I masked that off with masking tape. In order to get the edges clean and crisp I used a very sharp brand new blade and I cut out the masking tape that I had stuck down. Once I was happy with that overall look it was time to spray black and after the black it was time to spray a chrome base coat over the top of that. After I'd sprayed the chrome, I sprayed that clear red and then it was time to unmask this. Make sure if you're doing anything like this, it's probably best to give it a day between unmasking. But if you're impatient, use the hairdryer. Back onto the base again and I used the white ink to go over the top of everything and just hide some of those ink and paint marks that came through the um, cling foam and once I'd done that I used a little bit of a dirtier yellowish sepia kind of colour just to spray a bit more colour into the dusty part of this base cloud. And then I used a bluish grey to create a little bit of warmth and separation from the dust and the smoke coming out of Iron Man's boots. Working on the model after you've gloss coated everything and it's shiny like this is extremely difficult. And the only thing I can say if you are doing something like this is just have patience. You need to put probably two or even three layers down. I find myself just working those metals over the top of the paint as much as I can until eventually it starts to stick. Once one layer sticks, you can paint a good solid layer over the top of that later. I worked on a load of the details on the Iron Man. Some of the trimming is a little bit awkward to get to, but as long as you take your time and pay attention to where the trimming is meant to be, you'll probably get most of this right. This is the Iron Man Mark 7 suit sculpted by 3D Wicked. If you wanted to get this file, there will be a link for 3D Wicked in the description below. But also, if you were looking for information about this, just look up Mark 7 Iron Man suit on the Google machine and there will be a lot of pictures to follow.
I really hope that this video inspired you to make your next model or even just to take it a little bit further and put lights into it. And if you want to go one step further, make it Wi-Fi. Why not? It doesn't really matter what you do. Of course, we are at the part of the video where I need to say to you, if you want to support this channel and you want to see more videos like this, come out in the future, then of course I need your support to help me make these videos. These lights don't burn my eyeballs if you're not helping them to burn my eyeballs and uh, the best way you can do that is by joining the Patreon. Over on the Patreon you get nothing but you do get the peace of mind that you are supporting an artist who creates videos that you might perhaps like and if you like these videos you might like other videos that I've made and uh, you might want to watch them and if you do like them share them with your grand. Also, also, speaking of the Patreon, I must thank the new Patreon we got this week, and that is David Scott. Thank you, my dudes. Because of you, I can blind my eyeballs with these lights. Now we are at my favorite part of the video, and this is where I get to tell you, if you don't like what you see on my channel or in this video, then the best thing you can do for me and for you and everyone in the world is just please off. Alexa, play Never Gonna Give You Up.